Je suis un peu plus de temps. Je suis un peu plus de temps. Je suis un peu Maturongal. AGRA, this alliance for green revolution in Africa, I mean, it started 2006, yeah. uh, mainly funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So they promised, or their objectives were, to halve the numbers of people going hungry in, tw in 20 African countries. Okay. They also promised by the year 2020 mm -hmm. to double the incomes and the yields of more than 30 million small-scale farmers. I mean, it sounds nice, huh? but it's also, from my perspective, it's a scam. Because the 30 million small-scale farmers is literally every single small-scale farmer at the African continent. And how can you reach all of them? And then it turned out that instead of reducing or halving hunger in these 20 countries, there was even an increase by 30%. So this entire green revolution narrative propagated by Agra and others, it's just a complete failure. It's a complete failure. The concerning aspect of this entire sort of narrative is that the focus is primarily on a very narrow description of productivity and the focus is on yield of a few grains and it completely ignores the efforts and strategies and knowledge systems that farmers have been using and relying on for centuries, some might even argue for millennia. The government set up is all the policies, all the laws which we have, they are geared towards improving agriculture productivity, which means it's a use of improved seeds. Actually, when we talk of seeds in Tanzania, we mean the seeds that are in the formal sectors. It has to go through the approval authorities, whereby they have set a certain criteria in order for a seed to be called a seed because other materials like the farmer seeds, those are not regarded as seeds. You were talking about input subsidy programs, but how do they function? In the case of Southern Africa, for example, in Malawi and in Zambia, how they typically work is that farmers apply or are granted e-vouchers and they use these e-vouchers to purchase inputs from agro-dealers in their communities, usually it's hybrid seed. And with hybrid seed, as you know, you need a lot more input to make sure that you're able to uh, secure the optimum yields. So a lot of it is centered around maize and ensuring higher productivity of maize for the state is how they measure level of food security also um, in these countries. Le Sénégal fait partie des pays de la sous-région qui subventionnent l'agriculture. Alors, les intentions subventionnées, que ce soit les semences, que ce soit les, 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 les engrais, mais en même temps, tout ce qui est matière agricole. L'utilité, elle est d'une importance capitale. Vous savez, euh, 60% de la population du Sénégal euh, dépend de l'agriculture. Et nous avons aussi une grande partie qui est constituée de ce qu'on appelle les exploitations agricoles familiales. Euh, si on parle un peu sur le côté de la mécanisation qui est, qui est en train de, de, de faire de grands pas, l'État subventionne même les tracteurs à hauteur de 60%. Donc ça, ça veut dire que l'État du Sénégal est en train de mettre en place toutes les chances du côté des populations pour que ces populations-là puissent vraiment avoir de bonnes productivités. This entire narrative about the increase of yields, it's not fitting into the reality. Because the, like the, the argument is, or their promise, okay, use our hybrid seed, use our pesticides, and use our fertilizers, and then your harvest, your yields will explode, and you will, be, and you will become a rich farmer. But it's just not true, because maybe you can achieve a certain increase in yields 
under lab-like conditions. But these lab-like conditions, you can never ever find them uh, in the real world. Especially under climate change conditions, it's just impossible. Those programs they are dealing with actual specific crops, the crops that have high value, the crop that can, can be sold so that they can earn revenue. Because the aim is to get money. The aim is not to save the people. Of course, they are, they are talking about saving the people, but of course, how they can the companies run without having money? So you can see that the concentration is on maize, and maize is actually the key crop in the country. When you have a foreign influence, we have money coming from outside, we have the seeds coming from outside, a lot of promotions that use this is the right material to use. And it increases our dependence on foreign organizations and those multinational companies. And it actually uh, takes us away from our own sovereignty in terms of seeds. When like, you become a dependence of uh, seed materials from outside, then you are colonized. That knowledge, that whole knowledge about seed, totally gone, totally diskilled. Farmers have been diskilled because all you do is just go to the, to the seed company, they know everything about seed and they give it to you. Or in fact, even better, you just buy the seedlings. You don't buy the seed itself because they know, they know everything about the seed. You are just a consumer. <laughs> you are just a consumer. You have no knowledge of how does this seed perform. To have an intimate understanding, a relationship with the seed, a respect with the seed and knowing how it performs. We've lost all of that. So the idea of reskilling, of, of learning is important because when everything else falls apart, these systems that have been shunned by the dominant system, they, they informalize our hope. This is the crack in the system. That's why we need to save these seeds and protect them and work with them.